All right, folks, if you remember, we were trying to make really nice shelves like this, and we ended up with a piece of scrap that came back from the customer. So how do we avoid this kind of interface? That's what we're going to talk about today. And so looking at this shelf, yeah, we want a nice, let's say we decide that it's most important to have a nice flat interface here on the top. And we want to have, like, we're going to look at this side of it so that we want to have uh, this face lining up as well. As, so this thing is sitting on our shelf. We want to have it flat on top so that we can set things on it. And we want a nice flush interface and we'll, we don't necessarily care how it lines up in the back because that's going to be up against the wall. So to do that, when we make this part, we need to figure out how we're going to hold that, how we're going to dimension it. So let's, here's our uh, scrap piece that we're going to punch holes in and then put pegs in. So if we've decided that the top and that face are the most important, maybe that's how we should be dimensioning and then holding this piece. So we're using this surface and this surface when we make the part. So let's go see what that looks like. We talked about it before. We put a part in there and in our minds we think about these two bullseyes that we're trying to target when we drill our hole. And as we saw before, when uh, when I was drilling with a hand drill, it's very easy for us to imagine taking that drill, looking at our target and saying, okay, I'm gonna drill a hole right there and I'm gonna drill a hole right there. But in practice, because we're just holding something rather than putting it in a machine, when we do it by hand, it ends up really cattywampus, things aren't lined up. So we say, okay, I, I didn't get those as accurately placed as I wanted to, so I'm going to use a machine. But the machine doesn't have eyeballs. Do you see any eyeballs on this machine? Okay, there's some eyeballs. Now, if the machine had eyeballs, it could look at where we wanted those holes to be and it could just put them in there no matter what size part you put in the vise. But that's not how this works. We know that not every block of material that we put in here is the same size. Let's watch for a minute what happens as we grow and shrink the size of the material. So it grows and then it shrinks and it grows and it shrinks. But look at the bullseyes, they're pretty much in the same spot relative to those fixed jaws. Now the reason for that is that we're programming this machine based on a distance from these fixed jaws. So from this surface we're going a program distance, it would be this distance, to this hole and to this hole. So if we're going to program this hole, we put in this number to go this far, and then we put in this number to go this far, and it puts in that hole. And that is independent of how big this block is, and it's the same thing with this one. We're going to go this distance over, and we're going this distance this way, and putting that hole in. So clearly, these surfaces of this vise must be pretty important if that's what we're basing our measurements off of. And because those surfaces are so important, we've given them a name, and that's, our, that's, that's where the term datums comes in. So let's look at these surfaces as datums. Clearly, this bottom surface is important. That's going to be our first datum. So there's a symbol for our first datum being this bottom surface of the vise. Our secondary, this is a nice big surface here, so we're going to call this our secondary datum. Alright, so A is attaching to our primary, B 
our secondary. Now where might C be? Yeah. So we've got our A, our primary, B, our secondary, and C, our tertiary, to get fancy with the words. Basically first, second, and third. And we're going to take our part and put it in here. And ideally, you're going on the primary first, secondary second, and tertiary third. But you're basically trying to ram this thing into that bottom corner. And if we wanted to, we could actually draw. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw a datum as if this was our zero down here. In practice, a lot of people refer to the services of the part or the vice jaw uh, or this imaginary thing. They call them all datums. But in reality, somebody somewhere says, now wait a minute, the vice jaw is not the same thing as the surface on this part. You can't call them both the same things. So what are they? Okay, well, the datum is this imaginary thing that doesn't exist in reality. It's in your mind that is where we imagine things being perfectly on center, perfectly flat, perfectly straight, perfectly orthogonal, perpendicular. That's what a datum is. It's an imaginary thing. So that is the datum. This is the feature on the part. So datum, datum, feature. Okay, and it's any, any, any feature that we're using. So the bottom is a feature, this is a feature, and the surface back here is a feature. So feature, feature, feature. These are datum features. The jaw itself is the datum feature simulator. So three things, the datums, the feature on the part, and the simulator that simulates the feature. Now some people like to think of the datums as being inside the simulators and yeah okay but the, this is how you should picture it anyway when you're, whenever you're looking at some kind of a fixture yeah think of that datum as being tucked in there but the datum is the absolute per theoretically perfect the simulator is something that, it's not in this case, but something that has been ground and manufactured as close to perfect as we can get it, but it still has high and low spots. And then the part, the feature itself, is the one that is really bumpy and its high spots sit on the high spots of the simulator. And that's how we put you know thousands of parts in here every day. Here's another way to look at it. We know that our targets are not just two-dimensional. They have depth to them. We want to end up with pegs that are not just in the right location at the bottom. We want them in the right location all the way up and down. So our bullseyes have depth, and that's how we don't end up with something like this, where maybe we targeted them at the surface of the part. No, we wanted it full depth. And yeah, if we were talking about the holes, this thing would be flipped upside down and those straws would go down inside the part. Um, if we're talking about the pegs, we haven't come up. I thought they'd be easier to see when they're up like this. Just as a reminder, and especially if you haven't watched the early, like, lesson one of my GD&T series, we think about our features as if they were a dart and we're playing darts and we don't care, you know, the feature can be, is, is pretty substantial, but it's the center of that feature as if it was the tip of a dart that has to go into the bullseye. And it's not just a two-dimensional bullseye, it's got depth to it. So this thing can come in at a slight angle, position, 
this is what position tolerance does for us, is it establishes a bullseye that has not just diameter, but depth all the way to the bottom. So when we bring with the machine, is going to come in and drill a hole, and it's going to be trying to put the center of that, essentially the center of the drill bit, eventually the center of the feature, in this cylinder. That is our tolerance zone. And then it's going to come over, again, the, a, a dimension from the back side of this vise, a, a fixture, to this position and put a hole there. Okay? So let's think about that when I put the drill bit. I'm going to put this drill bit up inside the chuck. You can imagine a center line of this drill bit that we're going to try to locate inside of each of those zones. So there is our zero zero at the center of our coordinate system. Now you can either imagine the, uh, the vertical, the Z, being down here or the top of the fixture. It doesn't really matter. Realistically it's down there. Uh, but yeah, let's say that is our R0. And then our first hole is going to go there. And our second hole is going to go there. And back to home. That's where our zero position is. So here I've got video of actually drilling the feature overlaid with the three-dimensional bullseyes. And you can see the center line of that drill is entering that three-dimensional bullseye. It's not right in the middle. It doesn't have to be. It just needs to stay inside of that target to make a good part. So hopefully this helps folks that have trouble visualizing how all this goes together. And there I brought the datum reference frame down in the corner of the vise so you can see how that relates as well. And hopefully through all this video this is becoming a little more clear how it's nice to have your manufacturing process set up around the design of the part so that the important surfaces of the finished product uh, the, we, we use those for datums and then we also use those for the clamping surfaces in the manufacturing process. You can't always do that, but if you can do it that way, it builds quality into your part. You almost can't help but make a good part and then you don't have to do all this inspection. You end up with a more reliable process and you can spend your time focusing on other things. Hopefully this is adding value for your folks. Uh, if it does, definitely a uh, thumbs up and share it with anybody else that you think might benefit. See you in the next video.